Let me share a story that I shared uh, when I was in Montreal for the weekend. On the Sunday morning, um, we had an event we welcomed people to, and it was called Lador Vador, Gifts the Generations Give Each Other. And one of the stories that I shared was from when I first came to my congregation in New York, and I made a point of, of meeting with the past presidents and meeting with people who had, who had taken a really formative role in shaping the congregation in, in different eras of its history. And I'll never forget this woman, this lay leader with whom I met. And she said to me, we were sitting over coffee, we were talking, and I remember this vividly. I've always carried it with me. She said to me, you know, I come to the congregation now on a Friday night, and the tunes aren't necessarily my tunes, and the things aren't necessarily the way I remember them. But I look around me, she said, and I see that this place is doing for the people who are here now what it did for me when I was at that point in my life, she said. And more than that, because that enough wouldn't be alone to keep her, more than that, she sees the values which were so essential to her being carried forward by the next generation of leaders. And I think that that, that wisdom was so deep and so important because she was recognizing that, that there are things that change. Of course, they have to if we're to stay vital. And yet, what came before it needs to be valued. We can't reinvent ourselves so much with each generation that we don't recognize ourselves. And one of the things I've learned very quickly about this congregation is there are people who have been members for generations. And what a great gift that is. What great resources and what great wisdom there is there. And so I always want this to be a place where people feel at home, especially if this has been their home for so many years. There is a great educational team here that is that is working really hard, lay leaders and professionals, to, to try to make this a place where kids feel at home. And I feel like every synagogue I've known has needed a really good hard look at, at what we're doing for youth. We're never doing enough. Um, we could always do more. Um, one of the models that I've learned from is that as, as a rabbi, if a kid ever knocks on your door, you stop what you're doing and you welcome that kid in and you pay attention to that kid and you listen to them where they are. And I think that, that in the world that we, in which we live, synagogues have something profoundly important to offer our youth. And I've, I've seen this happen time and time again in my other congregational experience that, you know, our kids are busy. Maybe in New York it's soccer and here it's hockey. Everybody's got homework. Everybody's got extracurriculars. Everybody's going from place to place to place. And what a congregation can offer is, is a step outside of that, an alternate community, a place where it might not matter if you had a terrible day from school because here you are with other kids and they care about you for who you are, not how you did on that last test or how the last hockey game went or, or whatever the issue of the day may be. And to create that kind of safe space for our kids, which is then um, associated with Judaism and enriched with, with Jewish knowledge and Jewish values, that's a tremendous, tremendous possibility. So the question is, how do we get our kids in through the door? And when you have a congregation that's scattered through a city, that offers tremendous uh, potential and tremendous challenges. And so I really, I need to learn more about what's been done and what we could do. Uh, but I have a real commitment to having this be a place that's a home for the kids as much as for the adults. The other thing I would say about that is that kids learn from their, from their parents as much as, especially teenagers, you know, the, we, we tend to think that they're not hearing a word that we're saying. They watch. They watch not from what we say, but from what we do. And so if a kid sees that their parent cares about coming to temple, about learning here, about praying here, about serving here, then they're going to take that seriously and that plants a seed. So we have to do that as well. If you'll forgive the phrase, Young adults are, are kind of the holy grail of Jewish synagogue life, that everybody is, is kind of anxious to, to capture this demographic. And I know Temple has done tremendous work with, um, with Nextdoor and with reaching out to, to 20s and 30s in the city. And I think that with this age group, the most important thing to realize is it's different than it was a generation or two ago. People used to come back to synagogue when they got married and had kids, but they used to do that in their 20s. And now, by and large, it's into their 30s. And so the, the um, trajectory of one's life and therefore of one's synagogue life is different. For that age group, I feel like what's so important is to meet people where they are, to show Judaism as a source of meaning, and to worry less about affiliation and more about planting seeds, to show Jewish life as being compelling to them, as, as offering something that can, that can speak to them in that time of life, which is a complicated time of life, which is a time of life in which 
one could use some, some grounding and community and support. And so here too, I think that there's tremendous potential. I think that we need to, to be careful not to be counting the numbers too much with that age group and to be confident that when we plant seeds, things will grow. But I do think synagogue life is different now than it was a generation or two ago, that affiliation is not um, taken for granted in the way that it once was, and that all of us as synagogues and as Jewish communal institutions, we need to work harder to, to show what it is that we can offer people in their lives. And a big part of that, I think, is to be part of something larger, to be beyond the confines of oneself.